Coming up on this episode of Outlook TV, Majestics at Montreal Pride. Queer Little Nightmares. Halloween on Church Street in Toronto. And much, much more. Hello and welcome to Outlook TV. I'm Rebecca Wyman. And my name is T. We'd like to thank the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh Nations for the honor and privilege to film this episode of Outlook TV on their traditional unceded lands. Outlook TV is the queer news magazine show that brings you the stories that matter the most from coast to coast. And we're going to kick it off at Granville Island in Vancouver for the Writers' Festival. Yes, it's Queer Little Nightmares. I wonder if they typed it on two fingers on a smartphone. Growing up gay can be a little bit scary, and during the pandemic, Daniel Lee and Daniel Zamparelli reached out to their writer friends to write a series of short stories and poems about their favorite monsters in Queer Little Nightmares. Welcome everybody to the 35th annual Vancouver Writers Fest. I think collectively we both had the idea of this anthology. Um, I was the pushier one. <laughs> I definitely, I think in the pandemic, reached a boiling point and was like, we have to make this anthology. I was just happy to go along with it because we've been talking a while about just, just throwing ideas out there about the anthology and yeah, Daniel was the one who kind of... A thunderstorm throws Vancouver into an ugly chiaroscuro. Ten falls down, the tendrils of Davy Street slope down on one side towards the ocean. He waits with a head rush, desperate to feel something as he looks down at the neighborhood he once loved. I can't stand what this place has become, he says to the night and the smell of piss. Yeah, so I think the call that we put out, we basically just wanted to see what a monster meant to queer writers out there, to see the kind of deep connection to them and how that was expressed in short fiction and in poetry. Uh, so it, there was some direction, but it was just kind of open enough to let them play and explore themselves to kind of why, you know, Freddy Krueger is their favorite. <laughs> Last spring, I dreamt that I was walking through a forest before being knocked out by a Naga lady and regaining conscious in the dream, not in real life, um, in the secret Naga lair, where I'm presented as an intruder to the king of Nagas. It's Mark Ruffalo. <laughs> what I'm looking forward to in hearing these readings out loud is um, the humor behind them. Because I think there's always a lot of seriousness when it comes to horror, but there's always a lot of comedy. And the comedy comes out with like voice. So when you like read it out and you hear the voice of the, of the narrator, you can hear the comedy of also that's also behind it. I had a poem that was basically like I was hearing voices in white noise that I had from the air purifier that I sleep with, and uh, most most of the time those voices are, um, for some reason, children's folk songs or something that you wouldn't expect to be scary. And I was like, okay, this is perfect for the anthology. So, if I'm reading the book, what am I going to experience? A broader depth of what it is to be a monster and also what it is that draws queer people to monsters mm -hmm. itself. Yeah, and I think what you're going to experience is kind of an unexpected facet of monstrosity or what makes something monstrous, I think, um, rather than just seeing them as kind of something scary or to fear or to, be, to ostracize. I think you're going to expect something unexpected about the monster that you're reading about. And and I think that's what's going to make kind of like a roller coaster <laughs> when you read it. Uh, if you wanted to get the book, I would suggest your local bookseller. Um, we're currently in Upstart and Crow. So if you wanted to get that here in Vancouver on Granville Island, that's where I'd suggest. Mm -hmm. um, you can also order it directly from our publisher, arsenalpulp.com. Um, the book's out. As Daniel said, go support your local bookstore um, or direct from the publisher. And, yeah, I think it's just about anywhere you can get books, <laughs> you can get it. So if you want to explore your little monsters or your shadow self, then you should check out a copy of Queer Little Nightmares at a bookstore near you. It's 
We're headed off to the interior, and for those that didn't know, that's in British Columbia. This is a documentary about queer individuals living in the interior of BC. Queering the interior. Yeah, just like me. My interior's queer too. I first met Wilbur Turner at the Kootenai Pride Festival, and now he is screening a documentary called Queering the Interior. He also founded Advocacy Canada and the Kelowna 50 Plus Pride Network. Let's go inside and check out this amazing documentary. And then I hear they were giving lobotomy to women who were lesbians here in Kootenai Lake Hospital. We're holding an event, uh, Queering the Interior. We're actually showing a documentary of that name produced by Touchstones Museum in Nelson, kind of documenting the lives of several uh, queer members of that uh, Kootenai's over the decades and kind of their advocacy and activism to create um, equality and inclusion and diversity in their community. I decided that they were gonna know Robert the faggot that lives up on the hill. The event is being held as a fundraiser for Advocacy Canada and uh, we're really hoping that it also brings awareness to the work we're doing in Kelowna. There were people trying to kill me, there were people trying to stop me from teaching. I did get threatened with death once. I think it was uh, uh, one of the historians in the Kootenays um, in the queer community that came up with the idea and in fact they have been collecting footage and uh, you know video footage and so on over the years and they just put it all together and got a producer. I've been beat up in this town many times um, and I'm verbally assaulted almost daily. I believe it would really resonate with other um, communities of queer people in other rural areas because of the kind of unique uh, challenges that are faced in non-urban centres for queer people. Indigenous person as a two-spirit person within a colonial world that I work in and live in is hard. One of the things that Advocacy Canada is uh, really focusing on is um, queer elders and uh, creating connections for them. We've created what's called the Kelowna 50 Plus Pride Network, which is a networking group for seniors in the community and uh, helping to engage and address the you know, things like social connections, um, health and well-being and, and those kind of things. So uh, it, it seems to be a really important thing to be addressing. Uh, one of the other things that we um, are looking at is when the queer community ages and goes into long-term care or assisted living, uh, quite often they don't feel safe um, in those environments and there's a lot of anxiety around it, so they tend to go back in the closet. So that's another thing to be addressed. I definitely feel that I've had an easier time coming to terms with everything than past generations. So what we're working on is uh, doing intergenerational work. So uh, bringing our youth together with uh, our seniors in mentoring projects and uh, kind of educational, but also um, addressing ageism and so social isol isolation of seniors as well. It's not either you're straight or you're gay there's a lot more terms to play with and try out. Wow, what an amazing documentary and what heroes and pioneers we have in the Kootenays and the interior of this lovely province. This is Patrick Massey for Outlook TV in Kelowna, BC. We're gonna have to take a little break now. We fell back into darkness. And coldness. <laughs> Welcome back. You're watching Outlook TV. We're catching up with Charlie's Charm. Is it art, fashion, wearable? Not sure. Fashionable art? Art fashion? Which is it? Is it which? Charlie's Charm has been an established brand in Manitoba for many years, and now they are gracing art fashion boutique with me, Ollie, at Pacific Arts Market. Let's meet Eddie from Charlie's Charm to know about who they are. Charlie's Charm is a business that's is unapologetic about who they are. We are a company that puts our authentic selves out there into the world. We specialize in wooden accessories and um, we use our platform to kind of bring awareness to the indigenous culture, to the Filipino culture, and to the LGBT culture. I am one half of the Charlie's Charm team. My partner of 18 years is the other half. 
this past October was our sixth year anniversary. So we've been around for about six years. When we first started, we were just a small baby company and now we've grown right across Canada. Um, we've been very fortunate enough to be accepted by communities right across Canada, North America, and actually all over the world. We ship out to the US, to the UK, to Australia. Um, we've shipped as far as Nigeria as well. Over a year ago, I started painting on blazers and I had met Charlie's Charm because we did uh, many markets together online during the core of the pandemic. And I've asked them to accessorize my blazers. A little few months after, we ended up creating a, a custom piece that was more of a sculpture or a couture piece for the Winnipeg Art Gallery for the Bloom Festival. And since it was so successful, we had so much fun, uh, we decided to actually open up an art fashion pop-up store here at Pacific Arts Market in Vancouver. We were featured in Call Me Mother, where Justin Abit is wearing uh, one of the blazers on the show. And then it kept growing and growing, so we decided to actually make the pop-up store permanent and turn into a boutique. And we moved here at the front um, of the store at Pacific Arts Market at Broadway and Granville in Vancouver. Identifying as 2S is is something that is very important. While I have a platform with our business and I grew up with a lot of the traditions, um, I've incorporated them into a Heritage Proud line where I'm able to showcase some of my beadwork, my quill, my quill work, and a different types of weaving of sinew. So art fashion is a, an expression of who you are. It's an individuality. It's a way to present um, your unique self and to promote your unique self and acceptance. The main message of art fashion is something that we hold really close to us. It's about self-acceptance, it's about self-expression, it's about trusting the process. So when we're going into creating our line, we're really focusing on what feels right to who we are. And it's such a great feeling when others kind of identify with it and we're able to kind of guide them through their self-acceptance, self-expression. We, we, we live by the where the fashion become the art. Make sure that you check charliescharm.com to know where they'll be and also to come here at Pacific Arts Market at the Art Fashion Boutique. For Outlook TV, this is Ollie in Vancouver. Switching gears now, we've got something for your health. Oh, health. I do love a health summit. We're at the Community-Based Research Centre Summit 22 Conference in downtown Vancouver at the Coast Coal Harbour Hotel to find out more about the organization and what they do. Please join us. Participants uh, who were living with HIV, which is uh, definitely a lot lower than we have traditionally had in the past. CBRC was uh, founded in 1999 uh, in Vancouver as a uh, nonprofit organization that was dedicated to responding to HIV uh, in Vancouver and uh, the disproportionate impacts uh, that HIV and AIDS were having on gay men. And uh, it was a real uh, reaction to the lack of attention uh, being paid to our community. The organization has um, developed into a much broader organization that still continues to address HIV and other sexually transmitted and bloodborne infections, uh, but the work is much broader now. That work evolved in to include things like mental health and how we're engaging with issues around substance use. And at the same time, sort of thinking about who we were engaging with and who we weren't and who was being excluded by, you know, the work of the organization. And so over the last uh, 20 some odd years, we've sort of worked to become uh, more inclusive, more representative of the diversity of the communities that we serve. Today, we now uh, have four sort of core pillars to our work. Uh, that includes uh, community-led research, knowledge exchange, network uh, building, and intervention development. So the theme this year is pushing possibilities, and we chose that theme because you know we feel like we're at a really important moment, having you know dealt with the COVID-19 pandemic over the last couple of years, but realizing that, you know, we're also dealing with other multiple health and social challenges uh, that are a threat to our health and well-being. You know, there are other pandemics that we're dealing with, HIV, um, and more recently, monkeypox. And I think, you know, those are just a few examples of, of ways in which um, our communities are responding to, um, you know, what's 
what's facing queer and trans communities. So you can imagine with a big uh, hybrid conference uh, that has 300 people in person, it's, you know, it's a big operation and something that we actually start you know, well in advance. As soon as the conference uh, ends, we're, we're already thinking ahead. And so one of the things that we're looking at in the future is hosting the conference in, an, in another city in, in Canada. Uh, we've held the conference in Vancouver. Apart from the years that it was virtual, it's always been in Vancouver. One of the things that we are wondering about is whether this is related to some of our focus on HIV self-testing. We sign up our, to our mailing list, so we send out a monthly newsletter, which is a nice way of staying on top of all the different um, programs that are happening at CBRC and ways that you can get more involved. For Outlook TV, this is Angus Pratt at the CRBC Summit 2022. It's time for us to take another break. Wearing poppies proudly on our chests, we'd like to thank and acknowledge all our queer veterans for all their service. You're watching Outlook TV. You're watching Outlook TV. Welcome back. You're watching Outlook TV. We're headed back to Montreal Pride for a celebration of all local drag. Majestic. Well, at Local TV, it's me, Ollie. Nothing screams Montreal Pride like local drag. Every year, one of the Montreal Pride's biggest show is called Majestic and features drag artists, drag queen, drag king, and everything from the drag spectrum. Outlook TV was there to see this fabulous show. Today, we're presenting to you a montage of the best moments from this evening. Rocks, rocks, rocks. They 
That truly was a fabulous show and Montreal Pride has already announced their dates for next year so make sure that you go check out Montreal Pride's website to know when the next Majestic show is going to happen. Broadlook TV, this is Ollie in Montreal. We're headed off to Toronto now to check out some Halloween happenings. They closed up Church Street for gay vampires, gay rodeos, gay cowboys, just gay, gay, gay. Hello everyone, I'm here at Pegasus on Church in Toronto for Halloween on Church. Let's go check it out. <laughs> Halloween on Church? Well, Halloween on Church is gay Christmas for most of us. Uh, it's one of the biggest events that happens in the city of Toronto just organically and has happened for many decades now. Hi, I'm Jessica Prosecco and I'm here at the well on Church Street and we are watching Outlook TV! <laughs> To the businesses, it's a time also to celebrate, but it helps very much to the bottom line to have a big boost in October, you know, before we get into the holiday season. Halloween is my most favorite time of year. It's the time of year when all the Gaelics come out in their little costumes and we get to show off our finery. It really is gay Christmas. Happy Halloween, Outlook TV. So you see all kinds of different wonderful and amazing costumes at Halloween. People from all across the, the city of Toronto that love to come out and see some of the most creative costumes that they'll see anywhere. These are costumes that are better than some of the Broadway shows that get landed here in Toronto. There's a lot of things I'm prepared to do. You do one for mama, she'll do one for you. So Halloween to me is a time to celebrate it's like a second pride. It's gay Christmas. That's what it is. So this is kind of a rebirth this year in 2022. And I expect we're going to see it in bigger numbers with more and extravagant costumes than we've ever seen before. You know, I will see you in hell. Everybody's sexy there. Happy Halloween! <laughs> Lady Mary Crawley, at your service. Freddie Mercury. And the other queen, Liberace. Happy, Happy Halloween. Halloween! What a fabulous event it was. Andre Tardif here in Toronto for Outlook TV. That's all the time we have for this episode of Outlook TV. I mean, thank goodness, I'm really kind of cold. <laughs> but we'll be back before you know it. Thanks so much for watching with us. Why don't you find a nice hat to wear and check us out on all our social media platforms. And why don't you volunteer with us? We've had a great time. Thanks so much. I'm Rebecca Wyman. And my name is T. Stay, Stay warm, warm, Canada. Canada.